Navicular stress fractures are one of the most challenging injuries that runners face. This tiny little boat-shaped bone can be a huge frustration for athletes. They account for one-third of all stress fractures that occur at the foot. Part of the reason these are so challenging is because the navicular does not have good blood supply. The central third of the bone, the part that normally develops a stress fracture, is generally avascular in nature. That means there's not great blood supply, which limits its ability to heal. And the navicular specifically is in a tough spot when it comes to the foot. Every time your foot hits the ground when you run, your navicular is pinched between your first and second MTC joints. It's tugged on by your posterior tibialis tendon, and it has to manage the stress of the tailor head. Combine that with the fact that this bone doesn't have good blood supply, and it's in a tough spot. Runners will often port a gradual onset of medial foot pain that may extend into their arch. This normal normally starts with faster pace running and running up hills, but can quickly progress to any time that they're up on their feet. And unfortunately, we aren't great at diagnosing these because it takes about six months for most stress fractures to be confirmed. And the only way we do that is through an MRI and often a CT scan. When a runner enters a clinic, they'll often report pain with palpation of an end spot over that navicular bone. Torg and colleagues have shown that 81% of navicular stress fractures will report palpable tenderness over their navicular bone. Because of the unique forces that play with this injury and the bone's high risk of not healing on its own, surgery is often an option. And depending on the specifics of that fracture, there's different surgical options as well. They're highlighted in this table. Now don't fret, it's not guaranteed that you need to have a surgery if you have one of these injuries. But if we go the conservative route, we have to be very conservative. This normally means we need six weeks of non-weight bearing in a cast to see the best results if we want to avoid the knife. Regardless of whether we need surgery or not, there's some really key things we need from a successful rehab. A progressive rehab program that slowly increases the stress on the navicular is crucial to make sure those tissues are ready for where running. A general rule in stress fracture rehab is that pain has to be at zero out of 10, with navicular fractures being an exception. It's really common for patients to have some low level symptoms, even with palpation of their navicular bone throughout the next decade of their life. I'm okay with some low level pain with my patients as long as they are able to continue to complete their functional tasks. Specifically, they're able to tolerate single leg exercises where they go up onto their toes, they can walk around for up to an hour, and eventually they can tolerate jumping and running. Now, in my opinion, that rehab program should have some bigger movements like squatting and deadlifting. It should have some activities that put us up on one leg like farmer's carries and step ups. And it should include exercises that put us up on our toes like calf raises. A combination of all these gives us a comprehensive program that loads the navicular as well as the whole leg in the way that it has to be loaded when we run. After we've gone through that extensive rehab program, it's time to start running. Depending on the individual, the return to run progression could look drastically different. Theoretically, the best way for us to progress running is to first focus on the frequency of running, then deal with the duration of running, and finally dealing with the intensity of running. Depending on your goals, you might not need to progress volume or intensity, so we always have to adapt that to the specific goals of the runner. One of the things we have to watch out for is how runners will tolerate hills. Most runners coming off a navicular stress fracture will at some point report pain when they go up hills. In those initial stages of running, I try to keep it as flat as possible. If you're going back to running track, it's probably not as important for you to manage inclines as someone that's going back to running across mountains. These injuries are tough and they're all different. It's crucial you connect with a clinician that knows how to manage these so you can get back to 100%.